so good morning all of you myself dr vishwas brower uh, an assistant professor in department of mechanical engineering akgc gaziabad so today we will uh, look after the uh, different sources of renewable energy sources which we were uh, discussing about or which we were discussing about so we will now focus over all these things uh, different sources of uh, renewable energy sources like solar energy wind energy hydro energy bio energy and geothermal energy these are the different sources of uh, renewable energy sources which we were discussing of okay which we were looking after so these are the different sources uh, that is solar energy wind energy hydro bio energy and geothermal these are the different renewable energy sources okay uh, one by one we will discuss about all these uh, renewable energy sources um, in previous classes we have already discussed about these various uh, solar cells and solar uh, energy sources so today in this class we will discuss about this uh, geothermal energy that geothermal energy is the energy which is formed or generated with the help of uh, energy uh, which is emitted out from the earth that is the geothermal energy so geothermal energy there are the different sources of geothermal energy okay thermodyna thermodynamics of geothermal energy conversion electrical conversions non electrical conversions so th these are the contents in our syllabus okay uh, under this geothermal energy these are the different contents like resources of geothermal energy thermodynamics of geothermal energy conversions electrical conversions non electrical conversions and environmental considerations so these are the different sources of geothermal energy next is the magneto hydrodynamics magneto hydrodynamics is is a, uh, ki a kind of power plant which is formed okay and uh, there are this different principle uh, in this we will look after the different principle and working of that msd generator power plant okay and its performance how it per uh, get perform or uh, what are the various limitations of, of this uh, msd generators okay then after that we will look after this uh, this the fuel cells okay fuel cells different fuel cells uh, what are the fuel cells we will look, look after that and the principle and the working of the various types of fuel cells and the and their working performance and their limitations of this fuel cells okay first of all we will look after this geothermal power plant geothermal power plant is the power plant uh, like this Uh, in which the energy is extracted from the uh, earth crust okay A energy is extracted from its earth crust so uh, this this is these are the different layers for this geothermal power plant and the ener energy is extracted from here and this is the hot water hot water uh, from which it it gets extracted out hot water and uh, the, after extracting this hot water the steam is generated from this hot water and it will uh, imparted on the blades of that turbine and uh, with the rotation of this turbine it will give uh, it will give energy or the generation of uh, electricity and this generator will impart electricity to, uh, to our supply so this is the generator okay then electricity get uh, generated and the, uh, with the electricity this cooling tower is there okay this cooling tower is there cooling tower with, with which this cooling gets happen okay cooling uh, gets happen and uh, with this injection well okay injection well it get released out okay it get released out so this is the geothermal energy this is the geothermal energy uh, the generation of the geothermal energy geothermal power plant how this is the basic structure uh, how this uh, geothermal energy gets generated and we utilize these geothermal energy sources okay next is the geothermal energy available from the earth is potentially enormous means the amount of energy which is available uh, in this uh, geothermal uh, energy available from the earth is very enormous uh, the thing is that we need to extract and how we extract all these things okay so these are the things and the geothermal energy is a form of renewable energy and independent of sun okay it is a independent of sun uh, that uh, it doesn't depend upon the uh, uh, 
how the sunlight or the intensity of the sunlight may, means it is av available in the free form. So, the geothermal energy uh, is a form of renewable energy and independent of sun having the source of uh, natural heat inside the earth because uh, energy is available inside the earth. So, it is having the source of natural heat inside the earth. So, the enormous amount of energy available inside the earth in the form of heat is known as the geothermal energy. So, this is the geothermal energy. Then geothermal energy is uh, known as a renewable uh, energy because it gets uh, generated uh, afterward at, as it is an inexhaustible. It does not exhaust uh, after certain use. It is inexhaustible and it will last several million of years. It, it lasts for the several millions of years. So, this is the geothermal energy. Then this energy is available deep inside the earth more than about 80 kilometers. Okay. This energy is available deep inside the earth, uh, beneath the earth about 80 kilometers and evenly distributed. Okay. It is evenly distributed because the, of the internal structure. Because of the internal structure, it is evenly distributed, not the continuous uh, continuously distributed. It is evenly distributed because of the internal structure and the physical process that occur that occurs inside the earth. Okay, which occurs inside the earth. Now the difference is like unlike the solar and the wind energy, the supply of geothermal energy is constant. Okay, as the solar energy and the wind energy is uh, available uh, differently, uh, so it is not like that. Okay, unlike the solar and the wind energy, which is available in the bulk form, so the supply of geothermal energy is constant. Okay, it is available uh, constant and does not vary with the time of day. Okay, it uh, does not vary with the time of day or change it with the weather. Okay, it does not change with weather or uh, time. Okay, it is available readily. Okay, and then all the geothermal energy may always be available when it is needed. Okay, when it is required, it is available. Geothermal energy is available when whenever we want to extract it. Okay, uh, like the other two sources, it is not always available where it is needed. Okay, it is not always available where it is needed because there are certain points where, where this geothermal energy is available. So this is the thing. Then the principle of harnessing the source of energy available in the Earth's interior is simple. Okay, the principle of harnessing the source of energy available in the earth's interior is simple but in practice quite complex it is very quite complex first a geothermal uh, region is located okay first a geothermal region is located then a bore is drilled through the soft rock near the earth's surface to the hot igneous granite rock for, far below okay uh, for, uh, how this geothermal energy is extracted first of all a bore is drilled through the soft rock near the earth's surface Okay, to, to the ig, uh, igneous granite rock uh, for below, beneath uh, this uh, we, we get extracted uh, as we saw in the previous slides and then the inside rock are fractured with a suitable explosive. Okay, the, with an explosive these uh, get fractured, inside rocks get fractured so as to make the space for the large amount of water. Okay, large amount of water can, can be generated to be pumped into this region okay to be pumped into this region and the cold water is then sent through the hole okay cold water is sent through the hole and the uh, hot water is pumped back to the surface cold water is then sent through the uh, hole and the hot water is pumped back to the surface through the second hole okay hot water is pumped uh, previously back to the surface through the second hole the hot water or the steam produced can then be used in industries Hot water or steam which is get, uh, get produced can be used in industries for its reuse and the heat exchanger and the houses and the offices. So this hot water and the steam uh, produced can then be used in industries, heat exchangers and uh, houses and offices which can be reused. Okay. So this is the thing. This is like the atmosphere. Okay. This is the continental crust. This is the lithosphere and the plastic. Uh, asthenosphere and the upper mantle. Uh, the hole is get uh, getting drilled through uh, this and the uh, this uh, wo, uh, the energy is extracted from its inner core. Okay, so this these are the temperatures. Okay, uh, these are the temperatures means uh, 
like this is the earth and this is the atmosphere beneath the different layers uh, in in the inner core the different structures uh, the, the amount of energy which is available readily in the inner core is so much so that it get extracted from there okay so this is the temperature okay see this is the temperature as the, as we go uh, downward so it will get uh, so much amount of heat energy it will release out so much amount uh, the temperature is so much high as we go beneath this layer and the at the inner core the this is uh, the energy is so much and this is the radius means as the radius get increases radius get increases in kilometers the temperature get rise so this is the temperature gradient basically averagely there is a difference of one uh, one kelvin one kelvin per kilometer difference is there okay then the what is the inner core the inner core is a solid with a radius of about 1220 kilometer okay inner core is solid with a radius of about 1220 kilometer and consists of about 80% iron okay it consists of about 80% iron and 5 to 10% of nickel with a temperature of up to uh, up to about 7200 degree kelvin okay so this is the inner core we saw in the previous slide there are the different layers of uh, this earth uh, first of all the atmosphere is there then the first layer is the crust and beneath that uh, there is a mantle and outer core is there and then the inner core is there so these are the different things then uh, inner core outer core uh, so these are the different things then the outer core is the the outer core also mainly iron and nickel is in a liquid state and is about 2260 km thick and melted rock is also called as the magma okay melted rock is also called as the magma so this is the outer core uh, then next is the gutenberg uh, discontinuity marks the boundary between the outer core and the inner mantle okay the this uh, gutenberg discontinuity marks the boundary between the outer core and the inner mantle the, this is the region or the uh, kind of surface uh, uh, between these this is the gutenberg uh, discontinuity marks then mantle is about 2900 km thick surrounding the core and contains 83% of the volume and and most of the mass of, is the earth so this is the mantle so mantle is about 2900 km thick surrounding the core and contains 83% of the volume and most of this uh, most of the mass of the earth then next is the lower lower or inner mantle okay lower or inner mantle is that is semi rigid the deepest part of the mantle just above the core is called the mantle as we saw in this the first was the crust then next was the mantle so uh, the lower or the inner uh, mantle semi rigid the deepest part of the mantle just above the core is the mantle then next is the upper or outer mantle outer mantle is about 670 km thick okay outer mantle is about 670 km thick with two distinct region there are two regions between the, and that uh, the hotter uh, innermost part is plastic flowing while the uh, cooler uh, outermost part is rigid so this is the upper mantle okay the upper mantle flowing uh, that is the asthenosphere the innermost part of the upper mantle exhibits plastic flowing properties so these are the upper mantle then it is located be, uh, below the rigid lithosphere and is about uh, 100 and 250 km thick starting thick starting about 100 to 200 km below the earth surface and possibly extended to a depth of 400 km okay it get extended up to the depth of 400 km then upper mantle is rigid the the rocky uppermost part of the mantle is a part of lithos lithosphere this is the part of the lithosphere then next is the lithosphere the lithosphere is defined as the solid rocky region about 100 to 200 km thick which spans the crust and the rigid upper mantle so this is the lithosphere next is the uh, Mohorovic, that is the Moho dis discontinuity, is the boundary between the Earth's crust and the upper mantle. Okay, so this is the Moho dis discontinuity. I it is the boundary between the Earth's crust and the upper mantle. 
then next is the crust the earth crust occupies just 1% of the earth's volume with a thickness averaging just 15 km okay Thick, with the thickness averaging just 15 km then uh, in scale size this is only one fifth of the thickness of the typical eggshell there is a eggshell okay it is about the crust is about one one fifth it is about one fifth of the thickness of the typically eggshell eggshell ki one fifth ke about hota the temperature of the earth surface is typically 25 degree celsius that is the 298 kelvin and the continental crust is the exposed thick parts of the earth crust not located under the ocean the average continental crust thickness is 35 km the average continental crust thickness is about 35 km the maximum thickness is 90 km below the himalayas and the minimum is 25 km at the thinnest okay minimum is 25 km at its thinnest in the various places so these are the different things next is the ocean and the atmosphere these are the different layers first is the ocean the large bodies of the water up to 3.7 km deep sitting on the top of the oceanic crust so this is the ocean the water temperature at the surface is higher than the deep water temperature due to the solar heating and the thermal convention in the water which keeps it which keeps it uh, that way since the heavier cold water remains in the heavier cold water remains in the depths and the warmer and less dense uh, water stays on the surface less dense water stays on the surface the and the heavier cold water remains in the depths and the uh, warmer less dense water stays in the surface next is the atmosphere the the thin layer of gases above the earth extends to about 800 kilometers deep with a temperature of minus 273 degree celsius that is absolute zero at its outer limits okay at its about outer limit and most of the atmosphere about 80 percent is actually within the 16 kilometer of the surface of the earth okay most of the about 80 percent is actually within the 16 kilometer of the surface of the earth and in scale this would be equivalent to a generous coat of varnish on a desktop globe okay it is like a general coat of varnish on the desktop globe then next is the geothermal or the temperature gradient is the rate of increase in the temperature per unit depth in the earth due to due to the outflow of the heat from the center okay it is due to the outflow of the heat from the center then the temperature gradient between the center of the earth and the outer limits of the atmosphere averages about 1 degree celsius per kilometer okay it limits of averages about the 1 degree celsius per kilometer then the uh, temperature gradient in the earth's fluid layer the magma tends to be lower because the mobility of the molten rock tends to even about the temperature okay it tends to even about the temperature so this is the geothermal energy so then there are the three main categories of the geothermal plants first is the hydrothermal convention plant okay that is the vapor dominated systems these are the different uh, thermal convention systems that is the vapor dominated system dry steam field the liquid dominated system wet dry field okay liquid do dominated system there are there are the four, four categories that is the single flash st uh, steam systems double flash steam systems binary cycle systems and the total flow systems these are the four different liquid dominated uh, systems then third one is the liquid dominated low temperature systems okay then uh, under the first was the category for the hydrothermal convention system Th then next was the geo pressure resources next was the geo pressure resources and the third one is the petrothermal systems or the hot dry rock okay next is the petrothermal systems and hot dry rock one by one we we will see all these three main categories of this geothermal plants then the uh, the hydrothermal uh, convective systems are the best resources for the geothermal energy exploitation okay first is the vapor dominated system that is the dry steam field in this type of system reaches the earth surface in a relatively dry condition at about 200 degree celsius and above 8 bars okay 
it is above the eight bar such system has higher pressure at bottoms okay such system has higher pressure at bottoms about 35 degrees uh, celsius which decreases coming this uh, steam from the bottom to the top okay it decreases while coming from the uh, steam from bottom to the top then pressure drop through the well causes uh, it to slightly su uh, superheat at well uh, head where the pressure becomes about 7 bars the pressure get becomes about the uh, 7 bars then the different uh, si in the in the cycle vapor dominated cycle there are the different sources or the di different reasons in which uh, it get forms like superheated steam reaches the turbine through the and there are the different sections for this uh, uh, vapor dominated uh, cycle system for, uh, that is in the first system superheated steam reaches to the turbine through the centrifugal separator okay it reaches the turbine through the centrifugal separation where its pressure further get decreases okay superheated steam reaches to the turbine and its pressure gets uh, further decreases with this second one is the, the steam after expansion in the turbine enters the condenser okay the steam after the expansion in the turbine enters the condenser the condensation of the stem increases the volume of the cooling water okay the condensation of the stem get increases the volume of the cooling water third one is the condensation process in this there is a direct contact con con condenser in which the steams get uh, emitted out from the steam injector and this will get cooled down okay this will get cooled down so this is the condensation process fourth one is the mixture of cooling water coming from the cooling tower and the turbine exhaust is saturated vapor vapor getting pumped into the cooling tower okay fourth one is the mixture of the cooling water which will get emit out okay coming from the cooling tower and turbine exhaust is saturated vapor getting pumped into the cooling tower it it getting pumped into the cooling tower fifth one is the fifth one is the vapor from the cooling tower flows towards okay fifth one is the vapor from the cooling tower flows towards this and uh, the sixth one is the saturated vapor goes out uh, for the further separation saturated vapor goes out uh, for the further separation in this process in this sixth process the the saturated vapor goes out for the further separation okay then seventh one is the controls the speed of the steam flow okay it controls the speed of the steam flow how the steam gets flowed then next one is the flow of the water into the ground then the uh, water gets flow uh, to into the ground so this is the thing next is the in the in detailing we, we will discuss about this liquid dominated system that is the wet dry field liquid dominating system consists relatively large concentration of the dissolved solids okay it it is having the large concentration of the dissolved solids in this case the hot water circulating and the trapped underground is at a temperature range of 175 degree to 315 degree celsius okay with tapping by wells the water flows naturally to the surface okay while with the tapping by the wells the water flows naturally to the surface okay the water in the reservoir remains under pressure okay water in the reservoir remains the under the pressure and it does not boil but it remains in the liquid state okay it remains in the liquid state the water coming to the surface leads to the pressure re reducing uh, water coming from the surface leads to the pressure uh, reduction and the rapid boiling occurs rapid boiling gets occurs hence the liquid water flashes into the mixture of hot water and the steam okay the liquid water flashes into a mixture of hot water and the steam the overall conclusion is that liquid dominated system contains the wet steam dissolved with the many solids okay the overall conclusion is that the liquid uh, dominated systems contains the wet steam dissolved with the many solids so this is the liquid dominated systems next is the single flash systems single flash steam system flash system basically is a constant throttling process it is basically a constant throttling process resulting in a two phase mixture of a low quality okay it is resulting in a two phase mixture of a low quality in this process steam collected from the earth having a mixture of steam and the solid gets separated by a flash it gets separated by a flash after a separation 
हाई क्वालिटी स्टीम फैड इन टू स्टीम फैड टू दर्बाइन वाइल ब्राइन दैट इज दॉलिड डिजोल्व सेंड बैक टू द्राउंड ओके हाई क्वालिटी स्टीम फैड टू दर्बाइन वाइल द्राइन सॉलिड डिजोल्व सेंड बैक टू द्राउंड हेयर ओनली वन सेपरेटर दैट इज द्लैश सिस्टम इज यूज ओके वन सेपरेटर दैट इज द्लैश सिस्टम इज यूज सो दिस इज देशिक वर्किंग फर्स्ट इज दॉट वाटर फ्रॉम द रिजर्वायर रिच इज दैल हेड ओके हॉट वाटर फ्रॉम द रिजर्वायर इन द फर्स्ट प्रोसेस दिस इज द रिजर्वायर द हॉट वाटर फ्रॉम द रिजर्वायर रिच इज दैल हेड द नेक्स्ट इज द नोजल नोजल विच कंट्रोल द फ्लो ऑफ द स्टीम ओके नोजल विच कंट्रोल द फ्लो ऑफ द स्टीम सेकेंड वन इज दिस दिस इज द नोजल नोजल विच कंट्रोल द फ्लो ऑफ द स्टीम देन नेक्स्ट इज द लिक्विड स्टीम drawn from the ground got separated okay liquid stream which is drawn from the ground it gets separated fourth one is the high quality liquid sent to the turbine okay high quality liquid gets sent to the turbine and then fifth one is the brine sent back to the ground okay brine which is formed is sent back to the ground and in this in this sixth process then the uh, less co cold heat vapor sent to the direct contact condenser for the condensation process okay this the in the sixth process less hot vapor sent to the direct contact condenser for the condensation process okay it will send back for the condensation process then seventh is the condensed steam water in the cooling tower is reinjected into the ground okay condensed steam water is in the cooling tower is reinjected into the ground this is this is so this is the seventh process then next is the eighth process in the eighth process steam from the direct constant condenser goes to the condensate pump for the further cooling okay it it steam from the direct contact, uh, contact condenser goes to the condensate pump for the further cooling okay then uh, then one to two is the constant enthalpy throttling process one to two is the constant constant enthalpy throttling process is there so this is the ts diagram for the that same ts diagram temperature entropy diagram okay in the first a part water is underground geothermal deposit okay water is underground geothermal deposit then in the ab part in the ab part drop is pressure pressure get reduced or drop is pressure we see the throttling and the flashing of the steam in the bc process throttling and the flashing of a steam then cd is the entrance of the steam to the steam turbine okay entrance of the steam to the steam turbine then in the ce process brine from the flash separator sent to the reinjection well okay in the ce process brine from the flash separator sent to the reinjection well okay so this is the ce process and then in the df process in the df process expansion of steam is in the turbine okay expansion of steam in the turbine so this is the df process then fg is the condensation of the exhaust steam in the condenser okay fg is the condensation of the exhaust steam in the condenser then gh process in the gh process entrance of the condensate to the cooling tower in the gh process entrance of the condensate to the cooling tower in this process then hi is the injection of water into the ground well okay hi is the injection of water into the ground well so this is the hi process then ia is the supply of hot water into the production well okay in the ia process in the ia process supply of hot water into the production well so this is the ia process next in the liquid dominating system first is the binary cycle system binary cycle system in many geothermal and hydrothermal hydrothermal plants the water temperature and the pressure are too low for driving a steam turbine efficiently if at all okay then dual cycle is the binary plants dual cycles are the binary plants have been developed to make more efficient use of okay it is made to make more efficient use of lower temperature water in the range of 100 degree celsius to 175 degree celsius okay then in a binary plant in a binary plant the hot water circuit passing through the thermal source is separated from the from the closed loop working uh, fluid circuit used in the turbine by a heat exchanger okay by the heat exchanger then the hot water gives up its uh, heat in the heat exchanger to a working fluid it gives hot heat 
to a working fluid with a low boiling point okay with a low boiling point and high vapor pressure at a low temperature when compared to the steam when it is compared to the steam then the working fluid is typically an organic compound okay working fluid is typically an organic compound such as ammonia butane pentane or isopentane which circulates which circulates through the circulates through the secondary side of the heat exchanger where it vaporizes and vapor is then used to rotate a turbine in a conventional rankine cycle electricity generating plant so this is the liquid dominating system next is the geopressurized resources geopressurized resources as the name suggests geopressurized resources suggest that the system which works on the high pressure okay so these are the geopressurized resources this type of reservoir used where high pressure like 137 megapascal prevails in the deepest layer so this is the geopressurized resources then hot dry rock resources hot rock uh, uh, systems extract energy from the uh, dry rocks with the temperatures up to 1000 degrees deep 1000 degrees celsius deep in the earth crust rather than from the hydro thermal uh, aquifers but the first of the first the solid rock must be made permeable to allow the circulation of water into into which the rock gives up some of some of their heat okay such hot dry rock that is the hot dry rock systems needed the enhanced geothermal systems to extract the available energy and these involves the much higher investments and exploration risk the then extracting energy from naturally conventional hydrothermal reservoirs okay then the practical hdr systems depends on the particular natural geothermal natural geo uh, natural geological formations they need access to hot granite or similar rock with temperature with temperatures of 250 degrees celsius or more maintained by a heat flow from the earth's hot core and such high temperatures are normally found at depths of uh, of over 3 kilometers the deep the rock the higher it the temperature is then in hot dry rock resources water is used as the thermal fluid to get the heat out of the rock and to enable this the solid granite uh, must be broken up solid granite must be broken up that is the fracture to the to allow the horizontal water flow through the hot uh, hot rock layer and equally important to provide the largest possible surface area of the hot rock through which the heat can be transferred into the water then the water uh, circulation system needs at least two bore holes as uh, injection bore hole through which cold water is pumped at a high pressured high pressured down into the hot rock layer and an extension bore hole through which the hot water is returned to the surface so this is the thing then uh, this is the operation of this hot rock uh, hot dry rock resources in operation cold water is pumped okay cold water is pumped at a high pressure down into the very high temperature structured hot rock where it becomes the superheated okay cold water is pumped at a high pressure down into the very high temperature fractured hot rock where it becomes superheated as it passes through the as it passes through the rock on its way to the extraction on its way to the extraction extraction holes okay so this is the simulated fracture system where it is at fractured and the hot water or uh, cold uh, water is pumped at a high pressure cold water this is the heat exchanger okay this is the injection well from which the it is get injected then the diagram shows that hot water emerging from the hot water emerging from the bore hole is directly is directed through a heat exchanger and after giving up its heat the uh, the cold water is recycled back okay the cold water is recycled back down the injection bore hole into the hot rock bed okay it is recycled back down the injection bore hole into the hot rock bed then the working fluid of boiling low boiling point liquid circulating through the secondary circuit of the heat exchanger is vaporized by the heat extracted from the well water and used to drive the turbine okay it is used to drive that turbine so this is the production well this is the injection well okay so there are the various sites in of geothermal energy in india and abroad 
<coughs> in India, hot water spring <coughs> that is the Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh. There are the these are the certain locations which there uh, geothermal energy are available. That is the Galia, Nubra, Kuraha in J and K, Himachal Pradesh, Prabati and Bias Valley, and in Uttar Pradesh, uh, this is uh, Sigri, Jamnotri, Ban Banas, Ag Agora, Joti. And in abroad, there are the various sites like USA, Italy, Iceland, Philippines, Indonesia, Japan, China. These are the different sites which are available abroad. So, these are the different things. Then environmental considerations, we will look after this in the next class. So, we will end up today here and we will continue in the next class. Okay. Thank you so much.